you guys remember that video I posted a little while back about my inside takeaway and how to fix it, what I should do about it? Today's video, I'm going to go kind of in the opposite direction. Might surprise you. Stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. I'm back in the lab out here. I had a stomach bug for a few days prior to the filming of this video. I'm trying to get back on my feet and get my legs under me. Hopefully today goes well. I mentioned in the very beginning that I'd, I'd had these struggles in the past with my inside takeaway. How can I fix it? Should I fix it? Should I leave it alone? Should I embrace it? Is it part of my particular swing's DNA? Is it hurting me? Is it causing any problems? Is it worth the time and the effort and the absolute nightmarish headaches that come with trying to make these big swing changes? When it comes to the inside takeaway, almost all of the coaches that you'll see on YouTube out there will tell you that taking it away under the plane and too far inside is death. It is not a good thing and you should absolutely try to fix that. But there are two coaches that I can think of out there. One is Christo Garcia. His channel was My Swing Evolution. It is now Miracle Swing Experience, but it's still MSE. He talks about his OTT swing, where you take the hands away inside and then the hands come back out over the top and how that's making huge changes to his game and a lot of his students' games. He does his MSE intensives. Uh, and the second one is a very popular YouTube channel, a channel that I have watched for a very long time, Tom Segudo. Tom Segudo teaches stack and tilt, and one of the hallmarks of stack and tilt is that the hands go in. The hands don't go up. The hands go in. Those two coaches are just fine with inside takeaways, so I want to experiment a little bit out here today. I want to try and embrace my inside takeaway a little bit. I'm not going to try and follow the OTT or, or stack and tilt to the letter, but I want to try and embrace my inside takeaway instead of trying to think about fixing it. I want to just embrace it and see what happens. I may try and throw a few of the stack and tilt ideas into there, but in no way is this going to be a review of stack and tilt or the OTT swing. I am trying to find my own swing, but I think I'm going to try and experiment today with a few of the stack and tilt hallmarks. Let's get into this one. I can already tell this hooded sweatshirt was a mistake. It's too hot out here. I might have to change it to a t-shirt. So again, just let me say, this is not an in-depth review of the stack and tilt swing or the miracle over the top swing. This is simply, this is an eight iron by the way, an attempt to embrace my inside takeaway and see, is it, is it something that's really hurting my golf swing? When you take it away inside, a lot of the coaches say, that's death. Is it? Is it? Or can I find consistency and good performance from it? Now, in Tom's videos, which is stack and tilt, they try to stay over the ball, stay centered. They try and keep most of their weight forward. When the club takes away, the hands go in. They want the hands in. Shoulder, about kind of in line with your shoulder, not up. You know, you, you don't want it like this, but kind of like right there, right there. So hands in, that's me all day. My hands coming in, I've been doing that. So if my hands come in from here, one of the things I've heard Tom say is just trace that same path back down to the golf ball. If the club is coming away on the inside, bring it right back down on that same line. So let's try an eight iron here. A little bit more weight on my front foot. It's decent contact. Felt pretty effortless. Didn't feel like my hands got high. And we've got an eight iron carrying 147, total distance of 153. All right, let's try another one more. And I'm really gonna think about that inside takeaway and then tracing that line right back down. That's good contact, high ball flight. It's gonna carry up past 150. What are we gonna get here? Something felt like it clicked right there. Uh, oh, carry 162, total 167.6, which is essentially 168. I really felt like that took away inside, 
and then I brought it right back down on that same line. The funny thing is, is that when you, you think about coming from the inside a lot like that, and I'm kind of exaggerating it, you think, oh man, it's going to blast way out here, and then it's going to be a big, giant sweeping hook coming back in. Well, there's a touch of draw on that, but that's in no way what I would call a hook. Let's try again. Nice high ball flight, touch of draw. Once again, that one, not as far. Gonna carry in the neighborhood of about 150, so that was quite a drop off. 150, total distance 155, more on par with my first swing. This microphone's gonna try and cut my throat. All right, what happened the first time? Let's try again. Hands never got high to carry a 160, total 167. So just in the preliminaries with an 8-iron, again, a real test would be to hit, say, a 5-iron. But with the 8-iron, I feel like some of those swings were not exactly on point. Not necessarily what you'd call in the slot, but feeling that my hands go in, and then they come right back down, and I'm bringing the club from what feels like really on the inside path getting some really good consistency, some really good low points, and some really good contact with the golf ball. Um, are my hands coming in and then kind of over the top a little bit? I'm not sure. Let's go down the line and see. It's an excellent strike, by the way. A little bit more aggressive draw, carrying out past 150. Ended up left of target because it started on the line and drew pretty, pretty hard off, but 154 carry, 159 total. It's very good contact, and that was, it felt like it went pretty high. Do they show, I launched it at 24 degrees. Uh, not sure on the height. All right, let's do another one. Again, take it inside. All right, that one I blocked out to the right, but still really good contact. Carrying out about the same yardage. Eight iron, carrying about 150. I'd say 150 on average at this point. It's pretty close. 149. Ball speed, 105. Forgot to look at the height. Let's try again. All right, that one was struck. I, I feel like I can make some timing or position mistakes. 157 carry, 162 total. Apex, 106. I remember this time, 106 feet. I feel like I can make some timing errors here and there, or like the tolerance between what could be right on and what's acceptable has grown. It's like there's a, a larger margin for error. Again, that didn't feel like a perfect swing. Didn't feel like a fantastic swing. But look, that's actually going out quite a ways. Uh, contact was really good. I got 157 carry, 164 total. All right, now let's do a real test. How about the five iron? This is an inconsistent club, not only for me, but a lot of golfers out there. A lot of people, when it comes to five iron, four iron, they switch to hybrids because anything Below a six iron, five, four, three, a lot of golfers have trouble hitting those clubs. And whereas I can't say that I always struggle with it, what I do find is inconsistency with this club. So this ought to be a real test. Uh, by the way, in the description below, go check out Big Max. If you're looking for a golf bag, check them out. I've got discount codes in there for you. Save yourself some money. Big Max, spectacular bag. The 14-way dry light hybrid tour bag that I've got, best bag I've ever had, hands down, bar none. Okay, five iron. What I'm looking for here is I want some height. I think carry on this, if I'm averaging 185 yards, I think I'll be pretty happy with that. With rollout, maybe that puts me around 200, and I'm looking for a consistency of flight. I want it to be somewhere in the neighborhood of straight, and I'd like to see it not just 
burn along the ground and kill every worm along the way. I want it to have a little bit of height. That is blocked out to the right, but that is really good contact. I blocked it, but man, the contact on that was flush. Really, really nice. Carry of 183, total distance 200, apex of 63 feet in the air. It's down the line. Contact felt good. Looks like that's going to be a good carry and roll out. Pretty straight ball flight. Not a lot of turn. 189 carry, 207 total, apex of 61 feet in the air, 120 ball speed. Down the line, a little off balance. Again, good carry, good ball flight, little draw on it. Height on that one questionable or no? Actually higher, 64 and a half feet in the air, carry 185, total 201. Felt thin, but got away with it. Pretty, pretty close to down the line. Less carry, contact, not fantastic. But again, this is a five iron where normally the averages that I get out of it are more erratic. All right, one more. See if we can get back to that good stuff. Wow. Best one yet. Right down the middle. Not the longest carry, but it's going to carry out past 175, roll out to about 190-ish. And the height on that one was really good. Well, 61 feet, 177 carry, 193 total distance. I would say that's probably more consistent than I normally get when I'm trying to fight my inside takeaway. I started this video off with a pretty simple question. Does an inside takeaway mean that you're dead? That that's it? Once you go in here, that's it. Swing is over. You can't possibly play good, consistent golf or have a decent ball flight or decent yardage from that position. That was the question. Do I need to change it? The answer is no. I actually exaggerated my inside takeaway. And you see that I got good, consistent results, good, powerful ball flights, good yardages. The, the, it was always a little draw. Maybe it went a little left. Maybe it went a little right. But the grouping was pretty good. The ball flight was pretty good. The, the height, the apex, the shape, the, the, the distances were pretty good. Even with an inconsistent club, even a five iron that's very inconsistent for me, I found a decent amount of consistency that you could play with. I think I'm going to try and pursue a little bit more of what I experimented with out here today. So I'm not a PGA certified coach. I'm not Titleist TPI certified. I'm not USGTF certified. I'm not any of those things. I haven't been coaching the best players in the world for over 37 years. So take what I say with a grain of salt. However, I think to say that just because you take the club away inside means you're dead, I don't think that's accurate. I think what it means is that the other components, the other pieces of the swing and the sequencing of that swing need to be matched up to that inside takeaway. And when you get that right, you can actually produce some pretty great and consistent results. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe. Check out the description below to save yourself some money and help support the channel. Appreciate it very much. See you in the next video.